Namaskaram everyone and welcome back in today's video where we are delving into the intricate world of human emotion with none other than Sadhguru. Emotion, the very essence of our existence, hold incredible power over our life from the highs of love to the depths of despair. They shape our experiences and influence every decision we make. Join us as we unravel the mysteries of these powerful forces and discover how Sadhguru guide us towards understanding and mastering our emotions. Get ready to embark on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment as we explore the profound wisdom of Sadhguru on this fascinating topic. Let's dive in. Love has become a relevant thing in human life only because human emotion is a strong aspect of being human being. In human life, emotion is a very powerful thing. Even in this day and age, though people think they are very intellectual, even today their emotions are the strongest aspect. Yes or no? It's the most intense aspect of their life. They claim they're intellectual, but their intellect is never so intense, but their emotions are intense. Maybe not love, maybe not compassion, but maybe anger, maybe irritation. These are all emotions. So emotion is a, a very important aspect of being human. Now we're only talking about what type of emotion do you want to have? Now if you… do you have a mind? Do you have a mind? Yes. Would you want it to be sharp or dull? Sure. Huh? Sure. Why? Sure. It works better that way, isn't it? Similarly, if you have emotions, do you want to have sweet emotions or bitter emotions? Sweet emotions. It works better that way, isn't it? So love means just that, you have transformed your emotions into sweetness. Now I want to be in love without emotion <laughs> That's a very European idea. Love is an emotion. It is the sweetness of your emotion which we are referring to as love. If the same emotion becomes bitter, we call it hate. Usually it is the people whom you love that you hate, isn't it? Some time ago you loved them, now you hate them. You don't ha hate that man who's just walking on the street, isn't it? Some love should have happened and now the coin fell another way and now it's become hate. Yes? So it's just the same coin, if it falls this way it becomes love, if it falls that way it becomes hatred. Don't think they're too far away, they're pretty close. One little thing goes wrong, love becomes hate, isn't it? So, how to be in love without emotion? <laughs> love is an emotion. Now the choice is only, do you want your emotions to be sweet, pleasant or unpleasant emotions? The ch choice. What's your, it's an obvious choice, isn't it? <laughs> but most people are keeping their emotions bitter most of the time. Bitterness need not necessarily mean they're in active hatred, they're in irritation, they're in agitation, they're in some kind of… Fear is also an emotion, anxiety is an emotion. It is in some level of unpleasantness. If you make your emotions very pleasant, then life will be very pleasant. Even today, most people experience as a moment of love, as the most profound experience of their life. It is not. But they experience it that way because that is the most intense thing they have touched. What that is the deepest dimension of life they have touched is a moment of love. So they raise it to heaven. People are transporting it to heaven. People are talking about divine love. You do not know whether God loves or not. Human beings are capable of love if they are willing. Dog is capable of love. 
when human beings fail you, you get yourself a dog <laughs> If you get a dog, twelve-year guaranteed love affair <laughs> Yes? Don't… Uh, do not underestimate this. You get yourself a dog, every day you come home, what a welcome you get, <laughs> ah. Your wife, she's no good. One one day, she's one one way. Your children, they're not inter interested with you, come home or go. But your dog, every day what an excited welcome he gives you. <laughs> Nobody's capable of this, isn't it? Every day, without fail, He'll never show disinterest in you. He's such a boost for you, <laughs> Dog is love for sure. Maybe it's just a spelling mistake <laughs> You know, typos can happen <laughs> Now, if you made yourself in such a way, nobody around, can, around you can love you, then the only sucker you have is somebody must love you long distance from there. It's an unfortunate way to live. God loves you, it's the most unfortunate way to live. That means <laughs> you made yourself in such a way nobody can even look at you. <laughs> If people around you cannot help loving you, that's a nice way to be, isn't it? You may not be great, maybe at least you're cute <laughs> Yes? So, in yoga, we don't look at anything as love, hate, happiness, misery, we don't look at it that way. We just look at it this way. Do you want to be pleasant or unpleasant? If you become pleasant in your body, we call it health. If you become very pleasant, we call it pleasure. If your mind becomes pleasant, we call it peace. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it joy. If your emotions become pleasant, we call it love. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it compassion. If your very life energies become pleasant, we call this bliss. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it ecstasy. If your surroundings become pleasant, we call it success. So, the other names that you give are just leading to confusion. Should I be loving? You don't have to be loving. Just be pleasant in your body, pleasant in your mind, pleasant in your emotions, pleasant in your energies, you will be a wonderful being. If your emotions are pleasant, if somebody comes here, you can share that pleasantness with them. If your emotions are unpleasant, unpleasant, for sure you share that with people, isn't it? <laughs> yes or no? So you cannot… you cannot do something that you are not. If this is feeling pleasant now, it will naturally be pleasant to everything. If this is feeling unpleasant right now, it will be nasty to everything. So instead of seeing how to make this pleasant, you want to be pleasant to somebody. That is being loving. You don't have to be loving. If everything within you has become pleasant, whatever is needed in that moment you will do. If you need to say pleasant things, you'll say that. If you need to say some hard things, you'll say that. But without any unpleasantness in you, that's important, isn't it? <laughs> if you'll have to fight a war, you'll fight it. Without any unpleasantness in you, that's important. Then you will do everything only to the extent it's necessary. You will not do o overdo anything. If you say, I love somebody, you will exaggerate things about the people whom you love, you'll exaggerate good things about them. If you say, I hate somebody, you'll exaggerate bad things about them. You'll never see anything the way it is. People go blind with things that they love, isn't it? They have no sense, they lose all their sense. If they hate also, they lose sense. 
If you like, you will lose sense, if you dislike, you will lose sense. The doorway of life is in being equanimous that you're able to see everything just the way it is. Now you are pleasant to somebody not because somebody is nice, you're pleasant to somebody because you are pleasant, that's all. This is more guaranteed. It's a more guaranteed love affair, isn't it? You're being pleasant to somebody because you're pleasant. If I am being pleasant to you because you are nice, tomorrow if you're not so nice, something else will happen, isn't it? If you mortgage your pleasantness to something outside of you, you being pleasant or unpleasant is only by chance. Keeping this one pleasant is your business. If this one is pleasant, what… with whatever it interacts, it will generate pleasantness. Now you have not managed to make this pleasant, you are trying to be pleasant to somebody. And that is subject to so many things. If you have to be pleasant, they have to be fixed the way you want them. <laughs> and that's not possible. Nobody can be fixed the way you want them. You are not able to do that even with one person, isn't it? You cannot even fix one person the way you want them, forget about the whole world. The more you try this, the more bitterness and unpleasantness will happen. That is why in the so-called most intimate relationships, maximum amount of unpleasantness happens. So this is because you are trying to do something that you are not. You are trying to be loving when you are not pleasant. When you are feeling bitter, you try to be loving and see it will destroy you, isn't it? Yes or no? You tried all these things, isn't it? It's destructive. When you are feeling pleasant, it is effortless. So, you just have to look at why is it you being pleasant or unpleasant is mortgaged to external situations. If everybody around me is unpleasant, how can I be pleasant? Especially if everybody around you is unpleasant, it's all the more important that you're pleasant, isn't it? Yes or no? If everybody around you is in a mess, is it not all the more important that you're pleasant? If everybody around you is unhealthy, is it not very important that at least you're healthy, even if you want to take care of them? Is there any logic to everybody is unhealthy, so let me also get sick? <laughs> what is the logic behind this? So if people around you are unpleasant, it becomes even more important that you're pleasant. As we wrap up our exploration into the realm of human emotion with Sadhguru, let's take a moment to reflect on the profound insight shared. Emotion indeed a powerful aspects of our existence, guiding our interaction and shaping our experiences. Yet amidst the complexities of love, longing and bitterness, Sadhguru remind us of a fundamental truth that seeking validation from others can lead to an unfulfilled life. Instead, he offers a path of self-discovery and inner transformation where true love emits from within, radiating outwardly to touch the life of those around us. It is a journey of authenticity where genuine connection flourish naturally and where the essence of our being shines brightly. So let us embrace this wisdom with open hearts, knowing that by cultivating love and kindness within ourselves, we can create a world filled with warmth and compassion. This is not a summary of Sadhguru's word, it is simply my interpretation of the deep wisdom he imparted. Kindly keep this two separated to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you for joining in today's video and we will see you tomorrow. Until then, please take care. Namaskaram.